Welcome everybody to today's masterclass. This is actually the fifth masterclass that I'm hoping um, hosting with the Shopmatic team. So thank you very much to the Shopmatic team for having me along for another session. I really look forward to these each month. So the session today is really on practical ways to increase your website conversion rate. So as Uma said a little bit earlier, uh, last month we hosted a more of an educational session than what I usually would for my masterclasses. Um, and the reason that we did that was because uh, conversion rate optimization or CRO is a really big topic. And it's one that I find uh, small business owners are least familiar with. Uh, so we actually had a co-host along, as Uma mentioned, which was Dan Proctor. So he's sort of our resident uh, CRO guru. Um, so if you didn't catch that session, it's fine because we're going to revisit the topic tonight. Um, but I would highly recommend that you uh, go back and have a look at the um, session that Dan and I presented last month, um, as it will give you a strategic view on, you know, how big CRO is as a topic um, to help grow your business. And although tonight I'm gonna to take you through some really foundational uh, tactics for CRO, uh, you'll actually see from Dan's presentation or webinar, um, the opportunity to really grow uh, using you know, CRO, uh, not just in the short term, but into the longer term. Uh, so again, in this session today, we'll definitely revisit conversion rate optimization for those people that weren't able to attend last month. Um, but we're going to go into some really practical tactics. Uh, so after today's session, um, hopefully you've got a pen and paper handy because there'll be a number of tactics that you can write down and revisit your website um, to, to apply these um, after the session today. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, um, this is actually probably my favorite topic in terms of all the e-commerce pillars uh, because when you invest in the customer journey and improving your conversion rate, um, the, the multiplier effect uh, really can grow your business without you having to be running campaigns and doing a whole lot of hyper marketing activities. Um, so uh, strap yourselves in, we've got um, a, a jam packed session for this, this session. Uh, so for those that are new tonight, welcome to our masterclasses. Um, just a little bit about me to introduce myself. So again, I'm, I'm Claudia North and I'm co-founder of With Small Business. Um, I'm actually a certified practicing marketer and I've been in marketing and digital strategy for more than 25 years. Uh, I've worked in a number of uh, regions across the globe, so definitely Australia and New Zealand, as well as Asia, North America, and I've also founded a number of my own e-commerce businesses. Uh, so we started with small business to make expert e-commerce marketing advice affordable for small businesses globally. Uh, so that's really our vision, our mission and, and, and our passion for working with Shopmatic. Uh, so just to touch on what we're going to be covering today. So first of all, as I mentioned earlier, um, what is conversion rate optimization? So we're going to just revisit a summary of that uh, today. Next, we're going to tackle some conversion rate tactics for your homepage, uh, such an important place where all of our visitors come. Um, and we want to use that as a tool to uh, actually convert people. It's, it's really a, a, a functional tool as opposed to just having uh, imagery, you know, and text around the place. It's, what is the philosophy? What is the behaviours? How do we actually take people through that um, customer journey to convert them um, to purchasing? Uh, and then finally, we're actually going to be, so that'll be the, our homepage uh, optimization tactics. But finally, we're actually going to look at some conversion rate tactics for your product pages as well. Uh, so once we get our visitors moving on from our homepage, how do we get them to convert on our product page? So before we get started, we're going to do a poll. So Uma, are you able to launch our poll? There you go, awesome. it's Thank on you. right now, yeah. Amazing. So we're just gonna kick off with a poll now. Um, I appreciate that there'll be some of you here today that don't know what your conversion rate is. Um, you might not be sure what conversion rate optimization is. Uh, what we just love to understand is do you know what your conversion rate is for your website? Um, that's either a yes, and you'll know that uh, you'll know a percentage of, of what that is. 
No, you might understand what conversion rate optimization is, but you don't know what yours is. Or thirdly, unsure. Um, so this is again, this isn't. Um, this is more for for me to have a really good understanding of who we've got um, on uh, this session, so that I can just tailor some of the messaging, um, you know, to suit your business and 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 your understanding of you know, your conversion rate and conversion rate optimization. So we'll just give you um, all a, a little bit of time to uh, answer our poll. So it's a yes, no, or an unsure. Yeah, it looks like we have about 40% saying that they are unsure. So you are in the right place and that's it. <laughs> if oh you're God, unsure absolutely. what your conversion rate optimization is, that's the right place today. Uh, to find out how and what, what it is and how you can do that. Um, we have about 33% actually saying that they don't know. So again, you know, for those of you who are saying no and unsure, uh, I think it's going to be an extremely valuable session. We do Amazing. however have about 27% saying that they are uh, aware of what it is. Uh, still have a few people who haven't yet answered. Uh, like Claudia mentioned, please do give us an answer and response to this particular poll. It really helps us to um, you know, understand where you are at and how we can take this conversation so that it is absolutely useful uh, mm. for you. Mm. Okay, just gonna keep this open for another half a minute or so. Fantastic. Thank so, uh, Claudia, typically, in your opinion, in your sort of experience, um, you you were mentioning about it earlier as well. How often is it that people do do know their conversion rate optimization, or you know, what's what's been your experience? Yes. Uh, to be honest, it's pretty similar to what the statistics are uh, that you've just read out. Uh, okay. I would say that less than 25 or 30 percent actually know. Mm. I think that as small business owners, we're so focused on uh, sales, um, sales revenue, um, is revenue going up? Um, and what are we doing to drive sales that um, the nuances of digital get lost and and again, and that's why this is one of my favourite topics because it's so powerful for small business owners where they can uh, do the least amount of work for the mm. highest return on that. And it's not just a, it's not a campaign, it's not a tactic, it's a, it's a, it's a long-term strategy uh, where they can grow their business uh, without, you know, running around doing, you know, so much other work on, on marketing activities. Uh, so I really think it's the, um, you know, it's the, it's the hidden gold of, of digital um, yeah. So I'm not surprised with the results at all. Okay, okay. So maybe we will just sort of close the poll. I know we have a you know like an action-packed sort of a session ahead of us. This is absolutely just the first poll that we are at at this point in time. So just for yeah. everyone's benefit, I think we are pretty much uh, stacking up exactly where Claudia has um what she has shared with us. About 25% of us here in today's course, uh, session do know what our conversion rate optimization is for the website is, and the rest of you have said that you are no or unsure. So moving on, mm -hmm. I will just close the poll right now and uh, let Claudia take over. Yes, thank you, Uma. Uh, so look, I'm really excited for those people that know what their conversion rate is. Um, first up, I would say the average global conversion rate is 2.86. Uh, so if you are below that, then um, you'll be learning things today that are going to uh, help you increase it over 2.86. If you're higher than 2.86, um, there is still, again, opportunity for increasing your conversion rate uh, I've worked with businesses that have had conversion rates up around 8%. Uh, depends on industry, depends on pricing, de depends on your unique value proposition. Uh, there's definitely you know, a range for all of those. Um, but this is a place that you can invest your time um, and these tactics and, and further tactics uh, to, to, to make a change, which means you're not spending any more money on advertising or other things, but your revenue you know, is increasing. Uh, so thank you everybody for contributing to the poll. Uh, that's that's really helpful. Uh, so first of all, I just want to give a little bit of context to um, where conversion rate optimization actually sits in e-commerce. Um, I've developed over the last number of years what I call the e-commerce growth framework, which is specifically designed for small businesses. Um, so for all those people that have joined one of my other masterclasses, um, you'll be familiar with this framework. Um, the very first masterclass that I did in December last year was called the Must Have Growth Framework for E-Commerce. Um, this takes you through what the framework is. So if you didn't join me for the masterclass or you haven't seen that, I highly recommend that you look at that because it's going to help you with the strategic approach to your growth. 
um, as well as looking at each of those foundational pillars that are going to give you the sustainable growth that we need. Um, I was in a conference a couple of weeks ago when I was presenting the difference between traditional marketing strategy and e-commerce marketing or digital marketing. And the challenge that so many small businesses or small and medium businesses are having is that they're applying uh, marketing strategy, which is around campaigns to digital marketing. Um, and, and that's giving them the up and down or the peaks and troughs uh, in terms of their revenue growth month on month. Whereas the, our e-commerce growth framework is really about sustainable e-commerce growth. Uh, so I'd love you to go back and have a look at that, which you can easily find on the Shopmatic uh, YouTube uh, channel. Otherwise, you can visit the Go Shopmatic uh, resources tab and under resources um, in their webinar section, you'll find all of the masterclasses, but I highly recommend that you, you, you look at the overarching one. Uh, so in terms of this framework, we've used it for new store owners, so startups through to you know, established e-commerce businesses that are actually turning over, you know, multi-millions of dollars a year. Um, and it works for all, all small to medium um, businesses. Um, it really will help simplify uh, your approach to digital marketing, um, which I found for small businesses is so important because there's so many different hats that you have to wear every single day. Um, and this environment has become so much more complex. Uh, so we've really tried to simplify it with the framework uh, so that you know how to approach what's your next step for growth rather than sort of being distracted by all the noise um, that often goes on in the digital marketing area. Um, with all of our clients and members that we've worked with, we've actually, who, who have committed to the framework, we've seen their revenues sustainably grow over time, again, rather than having those peaks and troughs that you have when you do campaigns. Uh, so as I said, um, if you haven't seen any of my previous uh, masterclasses, which covers the e-commerce growth framework, I highly recommend that you head along to uh, see, see that to understand the framework. Uh, so in terms of the foundations, you can see here what we, got, what we cover. Uh, so we covered the framework. We've also looked, um, we've done a masterclass on branding for growth. We've done one on data analytics and insights. And then last month on conversion rate optimization. Uh, from a bigger uh, strategy perspective, whereas today we're really going to focus on our third e-commerce pillar, uh, conversion rate optimization from a tactical approach. So what we're going to do is just revisit or recap on what is conversion rate optimization. Um, obviously, there was a significant number of our attendees uh, in this session who aren't sure what conversion rate optimization is. Uh, so basically, it's a science of increasing the percentage of visitors that convert into customers um, by making changes to your website that's going to improve the customer buying journey. Um, and that experience, that in turn, is going to increase your conversion rate. So if you're not sure how to calculate your conversion rate, uh, basically what you want to do is divide the number of sales by the total number of visitors during a given time frame. And then we usually multiply it by 100 as it's usually expressed as a percentage. So when you're calculating your conversion rate, it's best to actually look at the average conversion rate over a number of months. And you can also identify where your fluctuations are. So for example, uh, you might look at the last uh, three months on a monthly basis. Um, and have a look at what was your total number of sales, what was the total number of visitors, and work out your percentage. Um, I often like to look at it for the last three months, uh, six months, and then 12 months, just to see if it's increasing, is it decreasing? Are we finding that there's seasonalities? Um, I also find that when we're doing digital advertising, the conversion rate actually comes down, and that's largely because you've got new people coming to your website um, and because there's an average of 2.86 or there's an average about 98% that won't buy on their first visit, um, you can it, it actually usually goes down. And if you're not advertising, you might find that it's a little bit higher. Yeah, so what we wanna find is what, what what's that average and are there any seasonal fluctuations? Uh, this statistic I know is really crazy. <laughs> Um, but from my experience, it is very 
very true. Um, when you invest in optimizing your conversion rate, um, you can actually be it can actually be seen that you get an um, increase on that cost that that return of over two hundred percent. And again, I know that sounds like one of those crazy ten x figures, um, but this is why it's my favorite pillar. Uh, we can implement tactics on your website that's going to become a multiplier of, of all your activities and of people coming to your website. So if you don't know, I'll just say on this uh, thing before we step on to the next point, if you're not sure what your conversion rate is, um, take down the formula um, and it would be great to have a look at last month and then last three months, six months and 12 months and just have a look at those fluctuations. Um, as well as make note of if you were advertising or you weren't advertising, that that's, that's also going to have an impact on your average for that period. So why is conversion rate so important? So when it comes to increasing your revenue and focusing on these tactics, as I said, you're going to extract more value from your um, existing traffic that's going to be coming to your website. Uh, so, for example, if you have 100 people coming to your website and at the moment one person is buying a product, that's a 1% conversion rate. So, if you only increase your conversion rate by 1%, uh, so we get to 2%, that's literally doubling your revenue. Uh, and, and that is for not increasing any other efforts in any place other than improving your customer journey. So you can see why it's so important if you actually invest maybe some of the money that you're spending in advertising or depending on where you're spending your other uh, sort of marketing budget, turning your attention to what is it that I can do to improve my customer journey. Uh, now, I just want to touch on what conversion rate optimization is not. Um, now, tonight I know I'm going to be or today I'm going to be taking you through some key uh, home page tactics and product page tactics. Um, now, conversion rate optimization from a broader perspective, a strategy perspective, is very customized to your website, your audience, your brand, your industry. So you don't usually have um, a, a blanket approach um, or a templated approach to conversion rate optimization. But working with a lot of small businesses, I noticed that they didn't have some of the real basics and rational um, customer journey tactics in place. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be taking you through tonight. Um, but one thing I wanted to say is it's definitely not a magic bullet. Uh, so when I say that, yes, we can definitely um, implement some of the tactics from tonight. Um, once you get some of the best practice, uh, best practices in place, um, it's actually an ongoing process where uh, you're A-B testing different things, whether that's button colors, image, different imagery, um, different placements of things on your website, because uh, you, you want to be able to hone in on your particular customer, uh, customer's journey and what is the best journey for them for you to optimize against the sales. Uh, so again, it's not a, it's not a quick fix. Um, and I mentioned it's definitely not um, something that we, could, we can apply, but the tactics that I'm going to share with you today is about the foundational best practices for conversion rate optimization. And then if you go back to uh, Dan's presentation, you'll actually see that there's so many things that you can implement over time, utilizing data, user, utilizing customer behavior um, to be able to uh, convert many people visiting your site. All right, so that's our conversion rate optimization recap or uh, revisited. So now we're really gonna get into uh, your homepage uh, conversion rate optimization tactics. So please make sure that you've got a pen on hand um, with your notepad um, and write down any of the tactics that I'm going to present through that you're not sure if you have implemented um, that you can go back and audit and have a look at and potentially implement them. Okay, so I've chosen this amazing uh, Shopmatic um, customer uh, business, so SVA, as a case study for us to focus on tonight, um, largely because their uh, best practice approach um, with the Shopmatic platform has demonstrated why they're such a successful business. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to showing you how they use the Shopmatic web store um, and all of their features and functionality to, to deliver um, a really good customer experience or customer journey. 
Um, so just to give a bit of background on SVA, so basically this is a Singapore-based company. Um, they're a natural cosmetic company um, and their sole purpose has been to revive the traditional and ancient beauty ingredients, which I absolutely love and um, really is connecting with uh, the millennials. So that's anybody born after uh, 1980 um, and some of us old souls. Um, so it's, it's very on point in terms of its proposition. Um, and basically they're marketing 100% plant-based hair dyes for niche target audiences. Uh, so our SVA's founder is Dapali Razdan, and she spent years researching traditional ingredients like henna and indigo and cassia. Um, and Dapali has actually mastered the art of science and plant-based dyes, and form she's actually formulating her own varieties. Um, so I really look forward to showcasing what SVA has done with uh, the Shopmatic uh, web store platform in applying some of the best practice tactics um, for e-commerce uh, com uh, conversion rate. So just for a little bit of fun, uh, what I wanted to do is just run a poll uh, because I wanted to see from your perspective how many um, conversion rate optimization tactics you might think there are on this home page. Uh, so basically I'm going to take you through some of these tactics. So do you think that there's three tactics? Um, so Uma, are you able to launch the poll for us? Oh, fantastic, thank you. Okay, so uh, if you could pick one of these. So do you think that there's three on this page um, or do you think that there's nine? Uh, basically, if you can enter your thoughts, I'm gonna take you through a few tactics and um, just reveal uh, what the correct answer is here. So we'll give everybody just a minute to select, uh, looking at the homepage here for SVA, how many um, best practice tactics for conversion rate do we think are executed on this page? Yeah, I'm trying to hazard a guess here. I'm thinking I can see certainly in three, uh, but the gap is really big from three to nine. So tough one to be able to rest of one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, great, yeah, okay. I can certainly pick out the three that I think I am uh, pretty confident you are showing us. Wow, wonderful. All right, so we've got some other responses coming in. About 65% uh, of our people here today think there are three. Okay, yay, people who think like me. And uh, <laughs> there are about 35% who say that they're actually able to see nine. So people, the rest of us need to find the remaining six that the rest uh, you know, <laughs> that they are seeing. Okay, uh, let's keep the poll open for like a few more seconds more for those of you who are still counting and trying to figure out and analyze what these tactics are that um, we see here. Um, just, just hit the button. There is really no right or wrong answer. I mean, we have Claudia to uh, share with us exactly what the real answer is and what are the tactics, right? So- Absolutely. Just, We're gonna yeah. go through definitely three of them. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Okay, so let's so maybe close the poll and uh, take Thank a final talk. I think it's um, 67 percent have said three and about 33 percent have said nine. So let's find out what the real answer is from you, Claudia. Absolutely. So we'll get started on our tactic number one. Uh, so basically, tactic number one is are your products and services and prices shown on your homepage? So we're having a look here at SVA. Now, yes, you may laugh, uh, you know, do we have them on the homepage? And it might seem really like an obvious question. However, all too often I see that this case is actually not practices practiced with small businesses in e-commerce. Um, and often it will, be, it will be on the homepage, but it'll be right at the bottom. Um, your product or your service is the whole reason we want to showcase what we're here for. Uh, and so in best practice, actually showing that on our homepage, uh, right under the hero banner is the, um, the best practice for showcasing our products or services. Uh, so number one, if you're not, if you can't remember where yours is, or it is not placed really high up on your homepage, uh, then this is something I'd definitely make a note to have a look at. So tactic number two. So 
So are your product descriptions or your service description elements linked from your homepage? So what we're talking about there is, if you have a look a little bit closer here for SVA, um, underneath each of their products, um, which are listed just under their hero banner, they've got um, the descriptions of each of their products. So for example, you know, Greek goddess shampoo. So they're not just going, hey, this is shampoo and a hair mask. They've got a, a description which is, um, which is descriptive, uh, but also quite engaging. Um, as well as you can see all the little dots, you can click on those and uh, little dots are great because people want to keep reading and then when they get little dots, um, they can click through to the product page. So it's, it's, it's quite an engaging way to get people to get deeper into your site, which is ultimately what we want to do. We want the home page to get them to click on something to get deeper into your site to learn more about your brand, more about your products or services. Uh, so again, first of all, you want to have your um, products, whether they're your bestsellers um, or products that you want to showcase high up on your homepage. And then secondly, we want to have your um, some description. So uh, an engaging title, um, as well as a description that's going to actually link in um, to, the pro to your product page. Uh, this is one of the um, examples. So in one click from SVA's homepage, you get to the product page um, and their product page is filled with really detailed information, which is what people want when they get there. Um, you can see there's multiple product images. Um, they've got a main product image. You can see the copy there. I didn't include all of the content um, that they actually had on their homepage, but we can see they very quickly get here. And then there's lots of information. There's ingredients, there's price, there's sizes, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so I'll, I'll touch on that detail a little bit later, um, but the key point is here how quickly they can get from the home page into a product. Okay, so uh, tactic number three. Uh, so is your shop now button located above the fold? Okay, so look at this one. Uh, absolutely, the uh, just below the hero banner, is a really bright popping color, really strong pink, uh, which um, is giving us an indication of action. Uh, so again, look, it's a very simple and logical tactic um, that again, isn't always well executed. So again, really important to double check uh, where your shop button now um, is on your homepage and particularly on the top section of your homepage. Um, the other point that I'd mention about this is to look at how this uh, is represented across devices. Um, so check if you if you've designed if your if your Shopmatic site and the way you've built your your modules is based around desktop first. Um, it's really really important to see how it's represented on uh, mobile. Uh, so basically, mobile commerce, uh, which has significantly um, increased over the last couple couple of years is now approximately 50, uh, 50 five, 0% of the e-commerce market. Um, and many of the clients that I've dealt with over the last number of years actually have almost up to 80% uh, consistently of their visitors coming from mobile. Uh, so you might be looking at your existing desktop website and be going, yeah, my shop mail button's up here and yeah, I've got it all happening. Um, but when you look at it at mobile, you might find that in that first section, uh, your shop button isn't showing. Um, so it might be worth having a look at how you restructure uh, your homepage so that when somebody gets, you know, to your homepage from, um, uh, yeah, their Shopmatic uh, homepage that you can go straight to um, Shop Now and you've got some, you know, of your products showing in that, in that uh, screen. Okay, so that's our three tactics. Uh, so just moving on, I know we all had, we had 67% of our audience saying that there was only three. Uh, but I'm actually going to show you five more, uh, which is why we've got SVA as our case study tonight, because um, they've really jam-packed in a lot of best practices for conversion rate. Um, a lot of them are practical, a lot of them are rational, um, but without thinking about uh, the customer journey, uh, you know, a lot of small business owners don't um, understand how they can optimise. And, and so I've got another five for you. Uh, so our fourth tactic is, is your brand message above the fold? Um, point one, is it above the fold? Point two, 
Um, is it clear and does it resonate with your audience? Um, so if you're not sure what above the fold means, it means that if you're looking at your website on your desktop or on a tablet or on a mobile, um, that in that first view without scrolling, that your brand message is represented there. Uh, so SVA actually do a fantastic job of this also. So they've actually communicated in two places. So first of all, boom, 100% plant-based natural hair dye solutions. So if you've come from advertisement or a referral, wherever you've come from and you land on this homepage, um, basically the brain processes things uh, within 50 milliseconds of coming to your website or your social pages. The brain doesn't want to have to think about, am I in the right place? Is this what I'm looking for? Straight away, you know exactly what SVA are about. Um, but they utilizing the, the promotional hero banner section, you know, amazingly well. Um, but what they're actually doing is not just using, utilizing that space. Here, they're actually utilizing just under that to further detail what they're about. Um, so in, in, in the section under the hero banner, you know, welcome to our luxurious range of ancient beauty secrets. Our quest for the best has inspired us to create a uni unique product range um, that's based on traditional beauty rituals and ingredients. Uh, so they go on to talk about, you know, modern science um, and a gateway to 100% authentic, handcrafted, toxic free cosmetic and wellness products. So they're bringing their unique selling proposition. So not only are they saying, what are we, what do we do? They're also saying how we do that differently. And again, they're doing that without a scroll. Um, and, so, and, and so that means that their bounce rate will be low. People are going, I'm in the right place. I understand how you're unique. I want to discover more about your brand. So that's tactic four. Uh, why are you unique? What, are you, what do you stand for? What are you about? What is your product? What is your service um, to be in that top premium section of your website? Okay, so tactic number five. Uh, so do you have an email sign up form? Um, and does it outline something that you can get in return? Um, so when we scroll down uh, SVA's website, um, on their homepage, they've, they've got a lot of best practices. So after this session, I highly re recommend that you look them up. Um, but a little bit of the ways down, they utilise uh, the Shopmatic module or form to uh, get the email addresses, so email subscribers. Now, the reason that I love this and it's a great um, homepage tactic is because if, you know, over less than 2% of people are going to convert. We've got a whole lot of people there that are coming to our website. And if they're going to come there, we've already paid for them through digital marketing, for example. Uh, we want to capture a whole lot more of them because they've come because something interests them. So if we can get their email address when they come to us, then we're not buying those eyeballs or buying that person again. We can actually start to nurture them along the customer journey to get them to convert to our business. Uh, and so when you have a look at SVA, you can see that this is in orange. When you actually scroll down their homepage, uh, it really stands out. It's very punchy. Uh, so I highly recommend that you add uh, to your homepage uh, this form section to complete emails and, and change the colour, make it punchy um, and give them something of value uh, for them giving you your email address. So it might be something like 10% off or 15% off your first purchase. Um, it could be a value add, so give us your email address and we'll send you a downloadable ebook on, you know, something inspiring or educational in relation to your products and or services. Okay, so tactic number six. So do you have trust factors and or social proof on your homepage? So when we talk about this, it could be uh, customer reviews or testimonials. It could be industry seals. So if you're in, you know, an organic um, uh, industry and you have some certification in organic or natural or sustainable, um, or you've been, you know, in particular magazines or print, um, etc. 
any of those kinds of things that people can recognize and have comfort for your business is a huge credibility piece that actually takes people further from, you know, your brand message, why you're unique, and it gives them confidence to go, I actually want to learn more about this business. Uh, so again, SVA, uh, they do both. So they have both um, before and after shots in terms of their, their products. So they've got authentic images from people before they use their product and after they use their product. And not only that, they also have customer testimonials. And again, you can see the testimonials are really bright um, and you can't help but read them um, when you're scrolling down their homepage. Um, so these two pieces, again, on the homepage are really important in giving your customers confidence um, and credibility uh, when uh, exploring more about your brand. Okay, tactic number seven. So your value proposition, is this outlined on your homepage and what really makes your company different? Uh, so again, this is this section. Uh, once we went down from um, the, the hero banner where we talked about the 100% plant-based um, and then we went down to refining the unique selling proposition, um, the, um, Dipali's then gone down into a section that uh, gives a whole lot more sense about their business. So uh, such uh, as, for example, they talk about formulated by an expert. So, you know, Dipali spent years researching, testing, um, putting into labs, testing, you know, all of her formulations uh, to make sure that they worked as well as that they're 100% plant-based, um, they're free from all the chemicals, et cetera. So all of this, um, again, gives, gives comfort to the buyer and also connects in with their values. Um, so, you know, the fact that it's plant-based, the, the fact that it's free from chemicals, all of these kinds of factors uh, really connect with people's values uh, and, and, and is really coming um, increasing. Um, it's on the rise in terms of, yeah, people being able to buy from brands um, that they connect with from a values perspective. Uh, okay, so this is a funny one as well uh, in that it sounds quite obvious, but um, our tactic number eight is, is your shopping cart icon visible? Uh, so again, I know it sounds really obvious, but I've been with so many, work with so many small businesses and medium businesses um, that it's just not really that visible. Uh, so it's definitely worth a check and obviously not just on your website from a desktop perspective, but having a look at your tablet and having a look at uh, mobile to see is that still you know in that first home screen. Uh, so SVA not only do this uh, once, but they do it three times. So on their top navigation bar, their very first navigation item is shop. If you are an e-commerce store, your first navigation item button should be shop. That's an absolute best practice. Secondly, they've also got their cart highly visible on the top navigation bar. Uh, but not only that, again, just below the um, hero banner, they've got, you know, shop. So we've got many opportunities here to get directly to the shop. Uh, so, yeah, so, so they've done a fantastic job of right now, as soon as you get to our website, you know that we're 100% plant-based. Um, hair dye solutions, you can go directly with one click uh, to a product, to the full shop or to a product page, um, just from their home page. Okay, so tactic number nine, uh, this is all about having uh, clear customer service connections or links such as, you know, a call number, uh, a contact us or a live chat. And once again, Tapali has done an amazing job of including chat, uh, multiple options for chat and live connection. Uh, now, I've worked with so many small businesses and they're a little hesitant to do this because, you know, they're very busy people, um, you know, feeling, oh, do I have to be online 24-7? Obviously, having a website, it's always live. Um, it's really, really important, not just for your customers, but for you to have some type of live chat functionality whether you can answer it real time 24 seven or not. Um, the way a lot of the chat functions are built actually allows you, um, often they might say, you know, uh, this business or, or, you know, SVA will 
uh, respond to you within 24 hours or within three hours or or something like that. Um, obviously, if if you're you know a lot live um, you know during the day, you can be more real time. Um, but this is where you'll get a better understanding of what's missing on your homepage uh, because people are asked, you'll find people start to ask the same questions. And so if they're asking the same question, you need to go, how and where do I communicate this in the beginning of the customer journey or even on the product page because uh, there's this consistent questioning. So it'll give you tips on how to better optimise your website and the customer journey as well it will increase uh, increase your sales because you're answering people real time or you're responding to people's questions about your brand and your business. Uh, so really, really important to include this and don't feel the pressure that you have to be, you know, on real time 24 seven. Um, you'll get immense value and so will your leads and customers um, just by having that available. Uh, also, I know that we have Dipali on the webinar tonight, so absolute um, welcome to you and uh, congratulations on uh, such a successful business and uh, such a well-built um, website in terms of customer journey and customer connection and engagement. Uh, so now coming on to uh, the response to our poll. So I think that you guys would all know that we've actually just been through nine uh, nine tactics just on uh, Dipali's uh, SVA's homepage that are absolute best practice that will increase your conversion rate. Uh, so I just wanted to say a big thank you again to Dipali for letting us use her uh, website, her amazing e-commerce store um, as our case study tonight for our Shopmatic um, web store owners. Uh, so not only does Dipali do a fantastic job on uh, her homepage, uh, but she does a number of best practices on her product page for conversion rate optimization. So we're going to uh, touch on some of those now. So tactic number 10, so we're talking about product page. Um, so categorizing your offer is really important. So if we think about some of the tactics that uh, Dipali has put onto the home page, so when people get there, they know that um, the products are, you know, 100% plant-based natural hair dye solutions. Uh, we know that they're lab tested. We know that they're unique formulations. Uh, we know that there's no uh, chemicals, etc. So everybody, uh, people that come there and go, yes, 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 uh, that's what, um, you know, I'm looking for. Um, but then when they go, that's great. But then how, how are the, how are the uh, products categorized so that I know I can quickly get to where I want to get to. Uh, so again, she does a fantastic job here. So plant-based hair dyes. So here's something really important. Um, there's a direct click from plant-based hair dyes, uh, which is the first product cate um, category that she has. And then the second one is the SVA hair mask. So really quickly, once um, a buyer knows that they're in the right place and this is what they're looking for, you know, are they looking for a hair mask? Are they looking for a hair dye? So again, very quickly, it's an easy transition uh, for them into the next layer to go deeper into the funnel for what product that they're looking for at that time. Uh, so our next tactic, our 11th tactic, so again, this is on our product pages. Um, is your photo galleries and product videos. Uh, so again, here you can see um, Dipali's put on a really inspirational product shot. So it looks beautiful. Uh, you can see the product. And then she's also got the product packaging. She's got some further detail about the product. So the more that we can do on our product page, the better. Um, the optimal number of photos and videos for best practice is actually up to 12, which I know sounds really crazy. But if you think about your product and or your service, so some examples, which Dipali has um, a number of them here. Um, so the product packaged, uh, the product open, um, your product really close up. So you can actually see, you know, the ingredients, um, your product in situations. So potentially, you know, on, on the skin or somebody wearing it or it in, in, in its situation, um, even the same with your services and also with multiple target audiences. So I know that uh, Dipali's got um, specific niche 
audiences. So her products work really well on gray hair. Uh, so having the product with somebody with gray hair, the befores and afters, which she's got um, demonstrated on the homepage, all of those things just give um, more depth and engagement to people when they're actually ready to buy and they're at, at the product stage. Um, and all of those, again, can also be represented as video. And I would say, um, like, you can never have too much on your product page in terms of videos and product. Um, and video is also really important because that can give, you know, customer uh, a better sense of understanding your product, um, building trust in your brand. Uh, it also improves SEO and, and also the lifestyle, which um, again, uh, Dipal is showing here a little bit of that lifestyle, the natural colors, et cetera. And, and so the videos go um, again, also to your, your social platforms, um, just to give people a, a, a deeper sense of your product. And so then moving on to tactic number 12. Uh, so adding recommended product sections to your product pages. This is really important for driving revenue as it can increase the your average order value um, as well as the actual average number of items per order that you're selling. Um, so recommendation engines, um, they have an effect of increasing your average order value by up to 50%. Um, so just even doing a decision tree going, these are all of my products. If somebody buys this, which other product or service would be relevant you know, to them and showcasing that on, on the product page uh, will, can really help increase that average order value and the number of items, um, you know, per sale. So that's 12 tactics that I've given you today um, with SVA's fantastic Shopmatic web store. Um, they've done an amazing job on uh, their customer journey funnel and hopefully through this session, um, you've learned it's not just about billboarding um, your images, your product, your services. Uh, it's really thinking about how do I get my customers' confidence and once they land on my website, understanding exactly what I'm about, why am I different, categorizing my product range, easily taking me straight to products. If I'm a, if I'm a repeat visitor, I just want to get straight to the shop page. I want to do that in one click. Um, so thinking about your regular um, or repeat purchase customers, as well as your new leads and how do you optimize that real estate to get them as quickly as possible down that funnel and through that journey? Uh, so all the tactics that I've taken you through today are about optimizing that journey to increase that conversion rate so that it's a lot more of a seamless experience for both your existing customers as well as your leads. So again, just really want to thank SVA for um, us being able to showcase uh, their Shopmatic store tonight. Um, before we continue, we just really wanted to understand, um, obviously there was 67% of our audience tonight who um, either don't know what the conversion rate is or are unsure. Um, so now that you've seen some of those tactics, you might find that you've actually naturally implemented some of them um, on, your web, on your web store. And I also know that the Shopmatic um, features uh, very much allow you to, to optimize that customer journey. Um, so from what you've learned, you know, do you think you've actually organically um, executed some of those CRO tactics um, or is there some really, you know, new things for you to think about and go back to your store on, on how you organise um, your home page and your product page? Uh, so if you're able to complete our poll, um, yes, you've, you've you definitely executed some of these tactics. Um, no, you haven't yet or some you, you might still be unsure about how to apply uh, some of the tactics that we've been through tonight. We'll just give you all a um, minute or two to complete the poll. Thank you, Claudia. Fabulous. I mean, there was 12 that you walked us through. I mean, uh, and not just on the, you know, the landing pages, the home page, et cetera, but also you know, specifically and clearly on the product pages itself. I mean, the opportunities to convert are really limitless, right? I mean, right down to the funnel of then, you know, like that, the deeper and deeper they get involved in the website or the web store. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Yeah. Absolutely. And also to remember um, desktop as well as mobile, um, yeah. when you overlay that, because uh, it's so easy when we're working on our website. I mean, we, you know, often we utilize desktop, but most of our audience is on, is on mobile. So um, once you've, you know, um, made changes, it's really important to check 
both desktop yeah. and mobile, that they're both um, delivering that experience. And that's, that's a fantastic tip that you've actually given us um, because, I mean, as everyone here knows that the Shopmatic websites are mobile optimized. So uh, as you're building the store um, and your site, do keep checking it out, checking out the particular URL, have it published, and then just check it uh, on a mobile um, device as well, on a tablet device as well. I think that's an extremely uh, smart and small tip, right? Like, I mean, but it could, it could really pay off such good dividends uh, right at the building yes. stage. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So... Uh, that's a great tip. Thank you. Okay, so I think uh, we have quite a bit of, bit of people who have answered us. Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, about 65% of the people have said that they have executed some of these CRO tactics on the website, which is actually very, very, uh, I mean, we're delighted to hear that, that you're actually leveraging all of the features that we are having on um, our shop. Yeah, Magic. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. If, maybe not all of them. And if you have missed some of them that you actually saw today, then, you know, make sure that you have most, I mean, all of them covered off. Um, uh, in your website. And for those of you who said uh, no or unsure, um, please, I mean, again, this is an opportunity. We have showed you what are all the possibilities that you have on your Shopmatic website itself, because this is a you know, case study. We were very, very clear that we wanted to show you on what can be done on your website rather than just keeping mm. it like a, you know, a conversation wherein you walk away unsure about what you can actually do tomorrow, mm. uh, you know, having yeah, attended I'm this webinar. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that is a great thing about utilising the Shopmatic platform that, um, you know, all of these best practices uh, you make very easy to, to implement and, and to flow through, um, you know, for, for increasing your conversion rate. So um, I think that you've, you've got all of these features available and it's really about, um, yeah, your customers knowing the, the rationale for how to, to structure um, all of those modules and features um, to, to, to drive those sales for, for their business. All right, great. I've, I've started the poll. Would you like to sort of like uh, uh, carry on? No, we are right at the end of the session. Oh, well, yeah, Q so we're actually up to, yeah, yeah, we're um, right one minute. Um, yeah, so we're absolutely, yeah, so we're up to question and answers. Yeah. Um, I'll leave up to you, Irma, in terms yeah, of what we're, we're both handle the questions, of course. <laughs> so yeah, so please draw, drop us your Q and A's um, in the Q in the Q and A section that you see. A couple of good things that you need to sort of like wait for. I did promise you that we will be having a lucky draw, so that should be on yes. any minute now after we finish the Q and A. And as you're waiting for the Q and A to come along, I'd also like to take the opportunity to thank Dipali, who's actually joined us here. Oh yes, uh, thank <laughs> you so much, and well done on your amazing site and your product and your proposition. Yeah. Amazing. I love it. So, uh, yeah. So thank you so much for joining us and great.